good evening ladies and gentlemen a warm welcome to you all in today's uh, session this session is being presented by diplomats lab in collaboration with nepal uh, uh, institute for international cooperation and engagement diplomats lab is an independent policy research forum committed to innovate research and analyze promoting global peace and prosperity we always strive to deep uh, to dive deep into diplomatic world and have academic discussions on the matter of global importance. We are proud to collaborate with NICE, uh, uh, which is an independent, apolitical, non-partisan think tank based in Nepal, which believes in freedom, democracy, and a world free of conflict. It envisions a world where sources of insecurity are identified and understood. Yeah. And conflicts are prevented and resolved, and peace is advocated. Joining us today, we have Mr. Atul Thakur as a session chair. He is the nodal coordinator at India Nepal Center, PhD CCI, and, and columnist at Kathmandu Post and The Hindu. Among the panelists, we have Ambassador K. Uh, Ambassador K. Rajan, who is the chairman at India Nepal Center, PhD CCI, uh, and he, he has been the India's for, former ambassador to Nepal. We also have Ambassador Ranjit Ray, who is also uh, India's former ambassador to Nepal. We have Mr. Dinesh Bhattaria, sir, who is the former Foreign Secretary Affairs Advisor to the Prime Minister of Nepal. We have Mr. Yubraj Ghimre, who is a senior journalist. And we have Dr. Pramod Jaiswal, uh, Research Director at NICE. Without further ado, I would request uh, Atul, sir, to take over and uh, hoping to see a wonderful session. In, in presence of all the dignitaries and attendees. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, since uh, we are dealing with, uh, we are going to deal with the past, present, and uh, prospects of India Nepal relations. We, we will be talking about the present birth boundary issue and many other issues today. So I will start with Ambassador Ranjit Ray and will request him to please present his views in 10 to 12 minutes. Sir, over to you. Ambassador Ray. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it's a great pleasure uh, to join this uh, August gathering and, you know, especially to interact with young people uh, and to discuss with them, you know, what is happening uh, in our neighborhood. Of course, the theme you have chosen is such a vast theme. Uh, so it's very difficult to cover all aspects. But on the past, uh, you know, let me just say that we have a very deep, intertwined, intimate relationship uh, with Nepal. It's a very ancient relationship. Uh, uh, it's, it's a relationship that is not just limited to the two governments. It's a very deep relationship between the peoples of our two countries. And it covers virtually every uh, sphere of uh, human endeavor. So it's a very, very close relationship. And obviously, whenever relationships are so close, uh, you know, problems also arise. Uh, and these problems obviously have to be solved through negotiations. You know, sometimes problems, uh, 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 you know, are, are not so difficult to resolve. Other times they are more serious. But I think the effort on both sides always has been uh, to listen to each other uh, with sensitivity, uh, to appreciate each other's concerns. And I think it's important to ensure that, uh, you know, we don't become complacent in the relationship. Just because it's a very strong relationship, we should not become complacent. We have to keep working. Uh, to strengthen the relationship, particularly in the context of the changing region, the changing world. Our countries are changing. Uh, we have uh, new youthful generations uh, with new aspirations. So obviously all this has to be taken into account. Now on the present relationship, of course, as I said, in terms of trade, investment, people to people contacts, we have a very strong uh, relationship. Uh, but uh, in recent uh, uh, months, you know, there have been certain irritants that have come into the relationship. And, you know, you know, some have been there for a long time. For instance, Nepal has been very keen to review and to modify the 1950 Treaty of Peace and Friendship uh, with India. Uh, because Nepal feels that uh, this treaty is in some sense an unequal treaty and needs to be changed. 
uh, to meet uh, current requirements. Uh, you know, India's view on this is that, yes, we are ready, uh, uh, you know, to look at this, to debate this matter with Nepal. Of course, we have to ensure that the concerns and interests of both sides are taken into account in any uh, modification. Uh, you know, the second issue, of course, uh, you know, relates to, uh, you know, the two countries had set up a group of eminent persons to, uh, you know, provide a roadmap for the relationship in the future. And, you know, this report has to be accepted by the two governments. And I think, uh, you know, this needs to be done. Uh, this is a small matter. We should accept the reports and then uh, start discussing the recommendations of the report. I think this will improve the atmosphere uh, in the relationship. The third issue, and of course, the most significant issue is the boundary issue. Now, this is a very, very serious issue. Uh, not that this is a new issue. This issue has uh, been raised uh, in the past as well. But uh, in, in recent weeks and months, this has been raised in a very different manner. And it has become a very emotive public issue in yeah. Nepal, uh, oh. unlike, unlike uh, you know, in previous years. And, you know, a couple of things I wanted to mention. You know, first, uh, it's the first time uh, that uh, this issue has been raised in this manner. In 1997, also, it was raised. But, uh, 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 you know, the, the actions that Nepal have, has taken, such as issuing a new map, uh, 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 going for a constitutional amendment, you know, these are causing a considerable consternation uh, in India. And, you know, the maps that we have of our two countries have been inherited from the British times. And there really has never been any debate. And I think uh, even in contemporary Nepal, the maps that uh, Nepal had issued uh, did not have this kind of extensive claim. The Kalapani issue, as we knew it, uh, related really to a much smaller territory. Whereas today, the new map of Nepal covers Lipu Lake uh, and Limpu Dhara uh, as well. And these areas have never really been uh, in contention in the past. And, you know, Nepal's own maps uh, demonstrate this. Uh, so somewhere or the and, and and the timing of this issue has come at a very uh, a very difficult uh, uh, period. You know there is the COVID pandemic, there is the economic fallout, and of course you all know about the problems along the India-China border. And you know this is such a serious issue. And at this time, the Nepal has chosen to raise and flag this issue uh, in this manner. So I think for the first time, I'm sensing, you know, I've been dealing with Nepal for a long time, and I still take a lot of interest in Nepal. But for the first time, I'm sensing that, uh, you know, people in India, for the first time, uh, uh, are feeling uh, 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 hurt. You know, I don't, you know, people of India always have had a very warm and affectionate feeling for Nepal. It's the first time that I think people of India are sensing that there is some problem, uh, something is amiss. And as to the timing of this issue, we feel that, you know, uh, India had already said it's willing to discuss the matter after the COVID crisis. And, uh, you know, if for Nepal this was so critical, uh, you know, perhaps there could have been some more conversations and a dialogue could have begun rather than precipitating the matter by issuing the map uh, and the constitutional Amendment. So somewhere or the other, we feel that, you know, this issue has been raised by the government of Nepal uh, for other reasons, you know, to divert attention from the problems uh, that the present leadership of the government is facing uh, within uh, the, its own party, the Nepal Communist Party, and also the pressure it is facing from the public. There have been demonstrations and protests against the government, you know, for the uh, handling of the COVID pandemic and for the economic uh, uh, fallout. So somehow or the other, the impression in India is that, you know, this very emotive issue has been taken up to divert attention uh, from these perceived failures uh, of the government. And, uh, you know, in the process, uh, this is harming uh, India-Nepal relations. And this is coming at a time, and it gives the impression that Nepal is not at all sensitive uh, to the problems that India is facing vis-a-vis -vis China uh, uh, in its border in Ladakh and uh, Sikkim. 
and the second aspect also is that you know a lot of indians and many of our media channels feel that somehow or the other there is a china angle uh, to this uh, cartographic assertion uh, by nepal i think you know we have all seen the role of china in uh, saving the government of prime minister oli uh, some time back uh, and subsequently we have seen these uh, interactions between the nepal communist party and the chinese communist party uh, and uh, you know somehow there is a feeling that uh, now china is very deeply involved uh, in the internal political processes uh, of nepal and that the timing of these this issue is not uh, coincidental so you know i'm saying that this is a growing perception in india and i think this is something that the government of nepal should be very concerned about and you know should take this seriously so that in the future you know we don't have uh, uh, you know we don't have uh, uh, more difficult uh, problems uh, in the bilateral relationship uh, you know i think for the future i am very optimistic as i said there is a new generation in both countries they are interested more in issues of economic prosperity and development uh nepal wants to become you know graduate from being a least developed country to a developing country india wants to retain its status as a very fast growing uh, large economy so we would like you know our both countries would like our neighborhood to be peaceful not to have problems political problems and those relating uh, to security and we would really like to focus on our development and we would like to develop jointly i think there is so much that nepal and india can do together uh, in terms of uh, hydro power projects in terms of uh, uh, you know uh, in terms of developing our sub region of uh, we have a professor from bangladesh as well uh, bangladesh bhutan india and nepal you know nepal can produce power in nepal and using the transmission lines through india can export power uh, to bangladesh so i think our vision should be one of interconnectedness and you know growing economic interdependence and when each of our country sees an economic benefit uh, uh, in 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 the cooperation uh, i think uh, uh, you know our relations will become stronger and the infrastructure is already being established in terms of Uh, road linkages in terms of railway linkages the integrated check posts the digital connectivity the oil pipelines the transmission lines so already a lot of work is being done and i think this is what needs to be uh, strengthened so we should reduce the areas of disagreement uh, put them aside and focus on uh, focus on areas uh, of of common agreement coming back to the boundary issue you know this is a very complex issue i don't see this issue being resolved in a hurry so it will remain uh, an irritant but what we could try and do is at least reduce the salience of this issue uh, in the bilateral relationship and at some stage or the other i think uh, you know talks uh, will have to begin of course the feeling in india right now is that this is not the you know an appropriate environment needs to be created uh 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 you know before before this can happen but i do hope uh, that you know this will not become a permanent irritant in our bilateral relations thank you thank you very very sharp reflections on the uh, current situation and, and the prospects uh, now to know about the views from nepal i will invite uh, mr bhattarai mr vidod bhattarai to kind kindly speak ambassador bhattarai ambassador dinesh bhattar sir sorry he is joining he had got disconnected he will be like okay can, yeah now i think he can speak okay uh, ambassador bhattar i if you can please speak sir please unmute yourself unmute yourself please ambassador bhattarai 
I think in the meantime, uh, we can have Mr. Gibraltar's give me this, senior journalist, to speak on Nepal side. Mr. Ghimide, if you can please step in. Pramoji, there's, there's some problem, I think, in the network. Uh, I can't locate him uh, in the list. Yeah, uh, because I guess um, Dinesh sir is on uh, there on the call, but his uh, audio isn't uh, showing. Uh, yes. So I guess there are some issues with the network. From and I end. can't locate Yuvraj sir. I'll just... Yuvraj sir, are you around? I think uh, now Dinesh Vatra will be able to speak. Maybe he is connected. Yeah. Can, can, you, can you see me now? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, please. Okay. I think I'll I'll be only supplementing to Ms. Ray. Uh, you, you are not visible. You are not visible. You are not visible. I'm can not visible. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Bhatra is there. Mr. Bhatra. Uh, is he going to speak or? No, sir. So you, you can please continue. You can you oh. can please continue. You are, sir, are, sir, please continue. We are, you know, like having this debate in the context of present dispute that is over uh, 370 square kilometer area which both India and Nepal have claimed to be part of claim. Uh, and we keep talking about, uh, Mr. Ray also, you know, like said um, that, we keep talking about our past intimacy that's been uh, brought about by history, geography, civilization, culture and people to people relation if all that put together is not able to sort out a problem i think you know like to harp on the past becomes very futile so it is equally challenging that we you know like preserve that past God. as a as a can you hear me can you hear me yeah, yes, yes, you're yes, 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 yeah, very much. Please yeah. go ahead. So, this is this is actually a bigger challenge to preserve those soft power component of the past and how much they have contributed to Nepal India relation would be uh, that that is very important for us to you know like and problem would be bigger only when we feel that our ability to our ability and will to solve them is smaller than the actual size of the problem. I don't think that's the case now. The best way to solve them is both countries, both government, both government have said is to hold negotiation. Yeah, definitely, it, it is you know, it's a time of pandemic. How much effectively they can hold the negotiation is one thing. But Nepal's government, I don't represent the government. But I do represent the general sentiment of the people. And I also know about the close bond between the people of Nepal and people of India, who obviously don't want any kind of irritants, um, you know, like uh, coming in the bilateral relation. The, Nepal, this issue came up, I said, way back in 1997. In 2000, I think he got muted. Uh, you, you got unmute yourself. Yes, please unmute yourself. You brush, sir. Is that fine? Yeah, I now it's fine. Yes, it yes. Automatically gets, no. still automatically gets yeah, no. muted. So yeah. it's been with the two sides have agreed way back in 2000, but nothing is moved. And habitually, I think we, we saw, we talk about this very close relation, but we are also in the habit of the government, the two sides are also in the habit of putting problems beneath the carpet. That I think the result, the, the problem gets compounded and when it comes to the public forum, that's what that's the situation we are facing today. As in now, Nepal has been uh, going through, you know, like a political instability for decades. 
first time after many many years a stable or a government with an absolute majority has come to power and only got support from all the sides because I mean, after all territory becomes an emotive issue for all so he got a absolute support from all sides cutting across party line and so nepal has requested india to saying that is deliberate or not but india responded very late that you know this will happen after the corona is over that time this china india tensions hadn't come to this stage but two sides at least can say that you know like at a, at a, in a proper uh, time they will be holding down but there are certain issues that create some suspicion like epg report that the ray was referring to i think it's, it was ready almost two years ago but the two prime ministers haven't got the time to accept it to acknowledge it that you know this effort the two sides put together in you know bringing about a joint report and submitting to their respect, respective prime ministers they haven't got the time so is it that nepal re, india relation is not a priority for india or you know like uh, it is just you know like they are okay if, if things are moving in in the direction um, so why should we be accepting any kind of report is that the is that the mindset so these kind of these kind of mindsets from the highest level need to be addressed that will give a that will give quite an assurance to the people of both sides that two prime ministers and two governments are very serious about nepal india relations taking further uh i also have to it's a, i know i don't have much time but i also have to say something because nepal india relations relations are either guided by treaties or conventions or traditions in nepal india case is more of traditions than treaties that govern the relations because both understand both agree that they have future together a prosperity they can go together many issues and if there are certain irritants at time that's that's the time where diplomatic channels and negotiations would be uh, uh, effective but here diplomacy hasn't got a chance because we are not dealing with a problem which will become much 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 more emotive and still much more complicated the for, for future generations to solve it if we don't solve it now uh yes there have been certain you know i have been a critical of some of the things in the bilateral context especially the radical radicalization of nepal's politics uh, how chaos has descended upon the process and issues of nepal's internal politics in which india has remained a factor used to remain perhaps a sole actor until few years ago but now uh china has come in a big way in nepal's internal politics in investment but we also need to go into why it happened as i said india was a sole factor or also actor why china comes in this big size i think in 2005 2006 political change india took a lead role it collaborated with the maoists a force it had called terrorists and it also collaborated with european union and america to you know decide the agenda much before nepali people put into it so when india european union and america were present in a big way nepal as a stakeholder in, in its internal politics i think china saw it as a threat why these hostile forces are there together in nepal and it started increasing its interest its interaction with the government agencies is its investment and as a result of that now to protect their interest and to because they are also suspicious about the presence of not only india but america and um, european in as actors in nepal's politics i think they have come in a big way and naturally they they because their interest has become so large there they would be uh, here as an influence on the government thing but what i would suggest that is that is another thing but what i would suggest is 
Nepal, whenever something happens, because there will be irritants in Nepal-India relations, they have been, they have, they have happened in the past. That should not be attributed to Chinese or third force, because Nepalese people are also thinking people. They have a history of always having remained independent and sovereign, and they would not be wanting to compromise it at any cost. So that sensitivity, sensitivity needs to be there. And the challenge lies in, you know, like making the interdependence or interrelations very dignified, be it with India, be it with China. Of course, you know, like India, Nepal's in relation with India is unique in the same that, but how serious we are to preserve that uniqueness. And it's only, my concluding thing, I'll say it, say that, you know, like, um, we keep talking about this civilizational, cultural, and historical part, but we cannot always be very security-oriented. Yeah. Nepal is, of course, you know, like, Nepal is a border in India, but at the same time, it has larger, you know, like, uh, proximity. It has always been like that, larger proximity with India. So to think that Nepali territory is a hostile, that perception is there. I can understand the perception that Nepali to territory could be a hostile, uh, uh, you know, like a ground for Indian forces to the extent of its being perception is fine. But to, to believe in that perception, even when reality contradicts that would be, I think a major, it, it, it will create more irritation in Nepal-India relation in future. Coming to, again, this border point, border issues, I think if, I mean, we must give up the habit of complacency in that sense that, okay, it's fine, so long as it's going, fine. But we must be addressing the problem. Um, we must, you know, like, find out what is the best way, what could be um, alternatives if that, best way didn't work but here we haven't given a try at all for the past 20 years ever since it was detected and so like, i mean the fact that it's in the map of nepal it's in the map of india it is there because it's a disputed territory it is disputed because both sides have stuck their claim on that uh, again as someone who has spent years in india who interacts with the people there apart from the government and as someone who lives in Nepal, watches the relation with both sides, I know that the people of both sides, they do want this problem quickly solved. How does the two governments uh, respect that will of the people of both sides depends on how democrat they are, how sensitive and responsive they are to their people's wish. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, before I move to Ambassador uh, Bhattarai, can I request Ambassador K.B. Rajan to please speak? Ambassador Rajan, sir. Can you hear me, please? I'm muting myself. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, good yes, afternoon. Sir. Yes, good yeah, afternoon yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you for organizing this uh, very timely and very uh, important discussion. Sir, we can't, see, we can't see you. Can you please unmute yourself? Yeah, it is please? unmuted. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. perfect. I'm delighted that uh, you're having this meeting on uh, India-Nepal relations at a very timely juncture because uh, the relationship is very much in the news. You've already had a glimpse of the past, present and future from what Ambassador Ray and Ambassador uh, Bhattarai have said. Let me try and uh, contribute some of the other elements in this picture. Uh, young people particularly would be very puzzled by the fact that there are so many hiccups in a relationship which is supposed to be very close, very intimate, and uh, an age-old relationship going back really to the time when, you know, the, our mythology has it that Lord Ram went from Ayodhya to Janakpur to woo the hand of Sita. And from there, we have had uh, the links uh, through Buddhism, and through various other uh, ways, there are links of geography, history, etc., etc. In spite of that, 
every now and then when things seem to be going well between India and Nepal, there is a, a major hiccup and, and a setback. So I'm sure young people must be wondering, why is it that a country which is supposed to be so close to India is also a, 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 a place where there is a lot of anti-Indianism? And let us not forget, and maybe young people don't know about this, India, perhaps more than any other country, has uh, been helping Nepal to play its uh, role to, in the uh, Committee of Nations to, to develop uh, faster, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right from the time when India became independent. Uh, so the policies have been very good, by and large. The intentions have always been uh, very good. Uh, but uh, in spite of that, there is this revival of anti-Indianism every now and then. Uh, you know, India was a country which built the first uh, uh, post office in, uh, in Kathmandu, the first hospital, the first roads were built by India. It was Nehru who encouraged uh, the international community to accept Nepal as a member of the United Nations and so on. But in spite of that, uh, as Ambassador Ray and Ambassador Bhattar have mentioned, today we are in a situation where there are a lot of question marks about the relationship itself and the future of the relationship. So let me just say a word about why I think anti-Indianism breeds so easily in Nepal. Uh, I think the seeds are really there to be found in the kind of relationship that the British uh, established with Nepal when they were in India first as the East India Company and then as, as a British Indian government, because they saw to it that, uh, you know, it was a basically unequal relationship where Nepal was able to really have its cake and eat it too, as long as it did not interfere with core British interests relating to security and also relating to the what the British thought was an entitlement to advise Nepal even on its internal affairs. And uh, they expected that that advice would be followed. Now, uh, they also incidentally, and I have this from the very senior Nepalese leaders who were alive when I was posted there, the British were very consistent in carrying out a kind of a subtle uh, campaign about what India could mean to Nepal after India became independent, because their basic message to Nepal was watch out for India. So basically they said, you can have this kind of relationship with us, but watch out for India, because India will never mean well by Nepal. Now, after 1947, uh, you know, we had a number of um, uh, things in Nepal some of them, with some of them, we had very good relations. With others, there were problems, there were irritants, and there was this suspicion that the monarchy was not terribly well disposed uh, towards India, by and large. But then you had people and you had political leaders who had fought side by side with our own political leaders for our independence movement. And so India sympathized very naturally with those political leaders. And it was really, in a sense, the monarchy on one side and political leaders of Nepal and India on the other when they were fighting for democracy. So India was, was on the popular side. So there again, there was a certain comfort level for India in the sense that even if there were elements in Nepal which uh, were somewhat anti-India, and I have to say that sometimes India also projected itself in a way which uh, only um, uh, you know, aggravated this perception about uh, its intentions. For example, the first ambassador of India and Nepal used to sit in, in cabinet meetings and so on. And despite all the good things that were happening on the part of India, the suspicion continued to grow in Nepal, particularly in the Kathmandu Valley, that the British were right and that India's intentions were not very good. Now, Nepal has been through a fantastic transition in just a few years from an absolute monarchy. It was the world's only Hindu kingdom. Now it is neither Hindu uh, in terms of the constitution, it's a secular state, nor is it a kingdom because the monarchy has been abolished. 
and then there was a Maoist insurgency, and you had a rare uh, example of a, an insurgency which lasted for several years where thousands of people died. In spite of that, the Maoist insurgency is now in the mainstream of the police politics. It's a member of uh, the, the leftist uh, party which is ruling in Nepal. Its uh, insurgents have uh, mainstream with the Nepalese army, etc., etc. So Nepal has been through a lot of turmoil. And as a result, the India-Nepal relationship also has not quite settled down. And particularly after 2000, Nepal has had the additional dimension of China taking a very strong interest in Nepal. Uh, earlier, the Chinese used to be wooed by Nepal, and Nepal was known to play the China card. Now it is China itself which is playing the China card. And so there is a lot of confusion as to uh, which direction Nepal will finally uh, go, because the attraction uh, magnetic attraction of China's economic clout and also uh, the way in which it has managed its uh, interest in Nepal is beginning to outweigh India's uh, assets in terms of the traditional uh, connections with Nepal. Now, what is needed is really immediately we have to uh, try and stabilize the relationship in Nepal. You've heard about the border problem, and it is correct that there should be talks as soon as there is an appropriate uh, atmosphere between India and Nepal. Once there are talks, it will be very clear on the basis of evidence that either India is right, or Nepal is right, or in a sense, both sides might turn out to be right. Maybe not equally right, but each side might have a certain uh, logic to its particular case. And depending on that, there would be solutions that would be available. But it might take a little time. In the meantime, I think we have to stabilize the relationship and we have to try and ta tackle the potential of the relationship. Given the extensive ties uh, in different fields and the complementarities and the uh, possibilities that exist in fields like hydropower, infrastructure, energy, tourism, etc., which Ambassador Ray referred to. So accelerated development of Nepal has to be taken up on a priority basis. But I think it is also very important that uh, India and Nepal think in terms of a relationship which is not rooted in the old British India-Nepal relationship, but in the situation that exists today in the interests and the future of the younger generation and the potential of the relationship for the future. Because uh, I think you cannot hope to continue to expand your friendship and it takes two really to strengthen uh, uh, friendship uh, between two countries. It takes both sides, both sides must introspect. It is extremely important that there is a sense of equality in Nepal and that Nepal has a, a sense that uh, India is really not taking undue advantage of its weakness. And this may be purely a psychological uh, aspect, but it needs to be addressed. Sometimes perceptions are much more important than the reality. And India must address the perception that it is sometimes taking advantage of Nepal's weakness. And like the British in the old days, it thinks that it can advise Nepal on its internal problems and expects that advice uh, to be heeded. So you need a totally new approach in India-Nepal relations and a new mindset which is rooted in the present and in future possibilities. And I'm sure that with in time, India and Nepal will, will recover from their current uh, uh, state uh, of tension and uncertainty and misunderstanding and actually offer a kind of a role model uh, for sub-regional cooperation in South Asia. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. The message is loud and clear that we have to utilize our relationship. There's no other way out. Uh, because there was some technical issues, so I had to uh, invite first uh, Mr. Yuvraz Gimine. Now I will be inviting uh, Ambassador Bhattarai to present his views in 10 to 12 minutes or more than that. Sir, over to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Atulji. 
Uh, good to see you hearing this uh, webinar. I thank the host for having me in the company of distinguished friends. And I appreciate their idea of uh, discussing uh, Nepal India relations, past, present, and possibilities. Well, if uh, we look back at the past of Nepal India relations, they go back to historic, uh, prehistoric period. So the discussing that will take months, days, months, and years. So uh, let us let us use the past for an objective evaluation of foreign policies at present to shape our future. And this, uh, when we talk of past and the present, there we hardly make any a complete departure from the past. That is why in foreign policy we keep saying continuity with change. Uh, obligation, there is obligation for every nation to maintain national security, dignity and respect. That is the supreme task of any country. So foreign policy continues the essential elements of safeguarding country sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity. And in other areas, there could not be an exact replica of the past. Several dynamics emerge over the years. New generation comes with new aspiration, rising aspirations, likes and dislikes or we can say revolution of rising expectations. And they want to be assertive than submissive. And they seek inclusion than inclusion. So Nepal and uh, Nepal-India relations, as we heard the previous uh, um, uh, speakers are saying that are old, age old, deep and wide, uh, wide ranging uh, multifaceted, intimate, and you know, all I think some internet problem. Spade is spade in Nepal India relations to protect the preciousness of these relations. I put myself in that category and I will be very frank and candid. Present state of Nepal India relation is in contradictions to our expectation. It is in contradiction to the ground realities that we face. It is in contradiction to the comprehensive inter interaction at various level. No, though the two governments are not talking, the interaction at the people level continue. And I don't think anyone is happy with the present situation. The present situation is such that nobody, nobody trusts anybody. Why this is happening? It is not merely a question of few miles of territory, 370 you know, square kilometer or like that. But it is not a question of few uh, the kilometers, square kilometers of territory on this side or the other side. When the prestige and dignity of nations, this happens and that is what is happening at the moment in Nepal-India relations. Kalapani area, I think it has been said in detail, so I will not go into detail, just I will say that Kalapani area that consisted of Lipu Lake and Limpiadura at the northwestern frontier of Nepal was identified as outstanding boundary issues, uh, including Shusta. And this issue, came to the forefront only after the advent of democracy, though it was there before also. It has been there for over 17 years. And 
the joint technical level boundary working group having completed the uh, the, the uh, drawing strip maps of about 98 percent the they could not settle these two issues kalapani and susta kalapani area means uh, lipu lake and uh, limpiadura the issue of kalapani since then remained an outstanding issue yet to be resolved and this issue has figured in the prime ministerial visit starting from uh, i think uh, uh, from 90s and when prime minister gujral came here it was raised there and when uh, you know the, the, the prime minister koirala went to delhi uh, on a visit and he raised it with his counterpart prime minister bajpay when prime minister deoba went to india on a, on an official visit in 2002 and 2004 and it was raised and to cut the long story short i i will say that in 2014 prime ministerial visit from india came after a long gap of 17 years and then nepali prime minister susil koirala raised this issue again with prime minister modi two prime minister discussed and they agreed to categorize it to put the issue of kalapani and susta as an outstanding issue so the issue remained outstanding for both the countries and the suddenly we saw that on november 2nd last year india unilaterally included the kalapani in its territory and nepal said no this is a unilateral action it is an outstanding issue yet to be resolved so the outstanding issues inclusion in the map is objectionable without our consent and so therefore it is not acceptable nepal requested for talks there, there was no response again wrote it again as we read it in the media like in december and may no response and on may 8th inauguration of the man sarobar what you call tirth yatra road was like adding fuel to the trigger a section of that road passes through the nepali territory so nepal again wrote to india for talks no response if i may add here when india and china uh, issued a joint statement during the visit of prime minister modi in may 2015 they included the joint statement included lipu lake in the in uh, in the statement and nepal wrote to both the countries protesting the inclusion of lipu lake without its consent knowledge and understanding and demanded that necessary correction to reflect the ground ground realities we made and there was there has there is no response as it in 5 years and these things are happening in clear violation of the past understanding by including the contested territory which in fact is nepal's is laid down by the sugauli treaty of 1816 it is for nepal it is not a disputed territory that even then since there has been indian presence in that territory for over 70 years we we the, the issue was long suppressed during the authoritarian system and where the free flow of information was banned so the issue came as i mentioned earlier to the forefront of nepali politics after the advent of democracy since then it has been raised in prime minister prime ministerial level i i said before 
And in 2014, two prime ministers directed their foreign secretaries, you know, foreign secretary level mechanism to work on the outstanding issues of Kalapani and Shusta. And I'm sorry to say that foreign secretary level mechanism has not met even once since its formation. It looks like that Nepal was taken, is being taken for granted. And here I will say that Nepal stands ready to facilitate connectivity. Nepal is ready to work with its neighbors, which are emerging as global power. Nepal wants to be helpful, you know, to, to, to them and to assist them, whatever way, addressing their security concerns, whatever concerns they are. And it has been the long and uh, consistent, um, you know, standing policy of Nepal that no activities would be allowed in Nepali territory that is that are hostile again to our neighbor. So here yeah, we have to come together. We have to sit across the table and present our facts, historical evidence, and bridge the trust deficit which is widening. So now talking about the future, Nepal-India relations are dominated by the frustration of the past, day-to-day -day events, traditional attitudes, or you can call it traditional mindsets. There are immense possibilities, there are immense opportunities, and like uh, ambassadors mentioned before previous speakers, trade, tourism, agriculture, education, and, and so many things, you know. So uh, let, let, us, let us use them for mutual benefit uh, and uh, common benefit. And one single issue must not be allowed to affect the age-old relations that Nepal and in India have. Let us not allow this issue to fester and let us start the negotiation sooner than later. And unless we talk to each other, how do we understand each other's sensitivities? And there can be no sign of reality. Overall situation has been worsened by mutual distrust and suspicion as a big power and as a big neighbor we, Nepal, expects India to press the button to open doors for dialogue. And we have to settle this disputed issue in a spirit of fairness, mutual understanding, and mutual accommodation. We cannot keep shutting doors for dialogue. How long we can go like this? We will be together. Geography does not change. And so, Nepal and India, they are so close. I do not understand why they are so far from dialogue. We are not distant neighbors. Why do not we talk to each other? Absence of talks, as I mentioned earlier, has allowed to gather the dense fogs of distrust and suspicion. Let us not allow, allow it to go further. And persuasion, comes better across the table. Diplomacy has been shadowed by politics and conducting diplomacy through media and fanning nationalism on either side of the border only precipitates the matter. Let us, so let us not do that. And, and on the, I, I think I would like to mention, I would like to touch on the China factor. Yes, China, is Nepal's neighbor on the north. I would say that Nepal-India relations are no substitute. You know, they, they cannot be replaced by any relations of Nepal with any country. And 
Nepal India relations are irreplace irreplaceable, but I would say that on the other side of Nepal, there is a huge country emerging as a big power, global power, uh, aspiring to be global power. So we, we, we cannot ignore that. And if we look at the global picture, there is, there is a global struggle to cope with the rise of China. And the US, the chief architect, I would say, of the rise of China is struggling to contain it. And China has increased its power and influence through checkbook diplomacy, not only in South Asia, not to talk of Nepal, but across the globe. And let us look at the United Nations. China's stature is growing along with its contribution also. It now pays 12% of the UN budget compared to 1% in 2001. And Chinese diplomats had four of the 15 UN specialized agency and America just one. So China's rise is global. Yes, but whatever, we, we have to engage China and we holding back to back China, um, you know, this is simply, I, to my understanding, is, is does not look a realistic policy for the United States and the world. It has, it has immense power. And the challenge before us is how to use China's power and influence and how to use China's checkbook diplomacy for our benefit. I think we have to manage it and we have to uh, judge every issue on its merit and then we, we, we take a position that is in the interest of nation. And Nepal is doing the same thing. There for Nepal, there is no question of choosing this side or that side. And India is the most important neighbor. And the relations with India are most precious. And we, 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 we value this relationship. India has been uh, helpful Indian assistance despite its challenges at home, you know, has gone a long way in the socio-economic transformation of Nepal. We are, we are grateful to India for that. And as our leaders participated in Indian independence struggle and no democratic movement has gone without India, has been successful in Nepal without India's support. We also acknowledge that. Having said that, I would say that when a question of national dignity, when a question of national respect comes in, you know, there can be no compromise, please understand the core concerns of Nepal, its sovereignty and territorial integrity. I think once that is done, everything, I don't think and there will be any problem uh, to, to, to put the relations on even keel. And let, before I conclude, let me stop with a quote from, uh, from Prime Minister, former Prime Minister of India, Dr. Manmohan Singh. He tweeted recently and I quote, Nepal is our closest neighbor. And we must make every effort to ensure that it's a small neighbor. We attend to their perception. Even when they wrong, they go wrong. We have an obligation to create an environment in which the common people in Nepal feel that in India, they have a great friend. Unquote. I think um, I've taken 10 minutes. I will stop here. And if there are any questions, then I will come later. Thank you, Atulji. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, can, can, can I request uh, Mr. Ranjit Ray to speak uh, a, a, bit about, a bit on the uh, issues he has raised? Ambassador Ray, sir, in two, three minutes. Oh, okay. Thank you, Atul. I thought I had already spoken uh, 
but uh, uh, you know just, just two uh, minutes your after after thoughts after thoughts sir. yeah no no i i agree that uh, you know our relations are really very precious because we are and, talking of uh, check books etc china so i think no so our relationship is certainly very precious yeah. and uh, yeah. you know this needs to be nurtured and strengthened and as i said it has to be based in the expectations of the youth of our two countries and in mutual economic benefit i just want to raise one uh, point ambassador bhatarai referred to several joint statements but i was looking at the joint statements of 2017 and 2018 these are the most recent joint statements when there were visits of you know prime minister oli to india and prime minister modi to nepal and i really don't find any mention of this uh, boundary issue in those joint statements so if it had been such a matter of great uh, national prestige and sovereignty and so on clearly this would also have, you know this would have been raised uh, very strongly uh, in these uh, bilateral visits and in this joint statement uh, we don't find uh, any mention and i think that is why there is this uh, some slight feeling of uh, in india as to the timing of this issue uh, you know why there is you know a certain amount of uh, mistrust uh, and this thinking that you know maybe this has been raised for other reasons uh, and you know i'm saying this in a spirit of great uh, frankness and friendship um, you know ambassador dinesh patra is a very old and a very dear friend i've known him for many many years uh, but you know whatever it is the point is once an issue has been raised we must try to resolve it you know i agree entirely that uh, you know whatever the issues if one side in a bilateral relationship raises an issue then it is incumbent on both sides uh, to sit uh, and try and resolve it because you know there really is no other way uh, out of the uh, out of the problem and you know if these issues are allowed to fester over a period of time then they become more difficult more intractable and you know that is not in uh, anybody's interest so i think i'll stop there thank you sir uh, may i request ambassador rajan to speak a few minutes sir can you please unmute yourself no please carry on i would like okay. to hear the others before i speak thank you okay 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 uh, dr dr jasbal you may please speak uh thank you atul ji it is my privilege and it's my privilege to speak in front of such a great experts who have worked for the betterment of the relation of two countries being a student of international studies it is also my privilege to be frank and not diplomatic like our previous diplomats from india and nepal because i think we need to be frank and very clear because we you are frank special uh, relations you are frank. And, <laughs> sorry sorry you are not visible you are frank but not visible okay. Okay. maybe there is some problem with oh okay. all right please can you, can you hear me can you see me now yes yes okay uh, no no cannot see but uh, hear but maybe i but can hear you okay maybe i'll use the other thing because as a host okay can you see me now not now okay not maybe there is some error but maybe we can hear okay, so please, i think please carry uh, on yeah. we had uh, since we enjoy very special relations we can be very frank there is no need to be very diplomatic when things are more complicated like, uh, like at the moment uh let me introduce myself i am a madesi who has studied in new delhi for almost 10 years and i worked for almost some of the top think tanks of india half of my family members come from india because i am a madesi and my property was divided into india and nepal uh, several years ago uh, i had six grandfather three are still in india their families are there so uh, i come from that situation so in this situation i have ex, uh, ex, i have anger i have frustration and being a young and uh, and uh, uh, among the senior pan panelist i think i should express that because i have almost enjoy very good relation with almost all the panelists none of them are stranger to me uh, my senior are there from jnu some of the investor are there so i want to use this as an opportunity to express my anger first i think nepal has changed in last 50 years india has changed and both the countries has failed to deal with that changing uh, change context both the countries have changed but the relationship has not changed the way it has it should be second is that india and nepal they often talk about a special relations now my question is what is so special if you go and check 
India and Africa relation, they still talk about historical, cultural, economic, and all those. So what is the special between India and Nepal? We are, we are talking about same uh, economic, social, culture. So I think if the relation is special, there should be a special attention to Nepal. Has India given a special attention to Nepal is a question. Does it, does MEA give a special attention to Nepal? I think they have failed to do that because they emerge only when the crisis comes. They act during crisis and it's particular South Asian extent, like when I have to meet a deadline for paper tomorrow, I, I, I do it overnight and then I submit it on time. So this is happening uh, in MEA in New Delhi that when there is crisis, then overnight there's some decision taken and they act. So I think we have to overcome that South Asian uh, behavior. Second is that, uh, Second is that like I was in JNU and my professor asked how many of you are foreign students? I raised my hand. I said, I'm from Nepal. Oh, you are from Nepal. Kya foreign desh and all. Ekhi desh hai. And I asked, if it is Ekhi desh, then why do I have to pay in dollars? So this is the another problem that when it comes to pay to Nepal, you behave that, oh, you are, oh, come on, we are same. But when you have to take, you take as a foreigner. So this has to be clear whether Nepal is a foreign country, its own country. If it is own country, it should be in its own policy that that kind of a special attention should be given. And if it is foreign, then you should be treated as a sovereign, very foreign uh, as a unique country. So this is second, that, that is there. Third is like on the issue of border. I think both the countries should sit together and resolve through dialogue. I think they have to sit on the table. Even if they can't resolve, I know the situation at the moment is very tense. It's not able to res uh, resolve it, but you can sit together, enjoy coffee, go and visit Paspati Nath, Tirupati, enjoy some time, spend some time, waste some time and make the people calm. Make people believe that two sides are really working. Give them false accusations, false belief that two sides are working. And when things are normal, act and act seriously. This is what I think. Second is that, it's often that when it comes to the problem, India always say China and Pakistan. I think we should go beyond that. Now, for every Indian problem, there's not China and Pakistan. Things have changed. If it is China or Pakistan, then it's India has to resolve it. It's India's problem and India has to overcome it. For every play, blame, they can't put it China and Pakistan because it is giving a bad image of India among the neighborhood. Second is that China, when India talks to China, they said trade deficit, trade deficit. Then the question comes to my mind that when India come to Nepal or other neighbors, do they also think in a similar manner that, oh, we have trade deficit with India, with Nepal, or we have trade deficit with Bangladesh, we should not do that because we are asking China to decrease. Are we, is India acting it? So this is, comes in the context of that. So when India wants certain kind of behavior from others, India should also learn to behave in a similar manner with other countries. Uh, I think uh, finding a reason, uh, I think India finding a reason uh, on the timing of protest. Oh, Nepal protests at this time. I mean, what is the right time to protest for a territory? I don't know. The right time for, for protesting a territory is when you come to know. Nepal came to know that Indian Defense Minister inaugurated and protested. Welcome China and Pakistan and Japan and America. First. Second is assume that there was China. I don't know there was China, but there is China. Now, China as a neighbor, if someone says that some of your territory is being taken by other country, what's wrong? India can also not provoke suggestors if we if we are treated by some india has done that and we expect that as a neighbor china and nepal are good neighbor if there is some error we, we we are open to suggestions at the same time when one thing is very demeaning that if india think that nepal need to be provoked for its territory it's a very demeaning statement i don't think anyone in india need to provoke india for the protection of its territory and i think it's nowhere in the world everyone will provoke I will be get provoked. They don't need provocation from third party, fourth or fifth party. So I think when it's state trade integrity, you don't need provocation. You just need false news. You just give fake news, there will be provocation. Don't, you don't give to facts. People really respond. So when India knows that particular territory is disputed, foreign minister, uh, defense minister integrated it, immediately Nepalese people protested on Twitter. Government responded much later, very late, but people responded. So I think that is one. Second, uh, Ambassador Dinesh Vatra has talked about how it was discussed. I think he has already mentioned, but I think first, by India has failed to accept it that there is a problem. Many times India says there is no problem of territory, which is the major root of the problem. First, India has to accept that there is a border problem. Then sit, look at the maps, 
I have not seen Nepalese map. I have not seen Indian map. I do not claim who is right, who is, who is wrong. I, I, being, I studied in Nepal. I have read that Kalapan issues are there. And being a Nepalese, I firmly believe that it's my territory. It's Nepalese territory. But I do not claim that. First, sit on the table, exchange the map. It's, it's something facts, not abstract. Put the map on the table, draw lines, make it clear. It's not so complex. So that is what I think both sides should sit together, resolve it, look at the problem and resolve seriously. Don't wait for, it doesn't take 10 years, 20 years between Nepal and India to resolve it. If, it, if, if Nepal and India, which is a very good relations will take 10 years, I think it will take 500 years to 600 years to resolve border between China and India and Pakistan and India. So when you enjoy very good relations, when you have two good, strong government on both sides, resolve it. This is the right time. Modi can do it. Oli can do it. If you can give evidence on both sides, it be easier for that. So I think that. I I'm coming to the end. First, is what's wrong with AP's report? Why there is so much anger in Nepal against it? If it was made on consensus of both parties, there was an equal number of experts from both the countries. If India believes that it's not to the mark, it can put for debate we can discuss. Maybe Nepalese are not very comfortable with what is there in the report. Maybe Nepalese will also respond that no, this report is waste paper, it should be in the dustbin. Let it debate, let people from both sides debate because 6% does not represent India and Nepal. There are six, uh, there are millions of people. So I think that really need to uh, be addressed. Now, uh, there are other yeah. questions that on the border issue that in India, the one who has to speak is silent and the one who has to be silent is speaking. On the border issue, the media is shouting, army chief is shouting, and the MEA is quiet. What Nepal expected at that time is one phone call, one strong statement, one clear uh, statement, press release from India. And it might, Nepal would, might not have gone to the extent of releasing uh, a map if, if that kind of active, uh, what you call, uh, participation from India would have taken place, but it was not there. It's, MEA doesn't exist for, for so many days. So I think that was really necessary that in India, the media is making noises and they're feeling empty India feeling in Nepalese mind. And if, maybe some Nepali media might be doing the same thing. I don't know. But this is what, that one who has to speak, MEA has to come at the front, make a statement, but they are sleeping somewhere, and then the army chief, and then the army guru, and then Baba Ram, they were all kind of people who do not have any understanding of what Nepal is making noise. So coming at understanding Nepal, I think everyone in Nepal, in last one month, I, I might have seen 1,000 experts all over mushroom in India, and they are talking about Nepal in their relations. Maybe many of them are not aware that KP Sharma is the prime minister but they're expert on Nepal affairs. So what is there? There's lack of understanding about India in Nepal and Nepal in India. In Nepal, we don't have a single India study center and India, there are few who claims to be a very special, uh, who claims that Nepal is very special. And again, in those center, look at the situation, how many experts are there, how many can really speak Nepali, though we write in the same font, you know, it's almost similar grammar. It's not so difficult because it, Nepalese don't need to learn Hindi. So Indians should not need to, it's, it should be very easy for them to learn Nepali. And I'm sure the investors are there. They might, they, they might be aware that how many Nepalese experts in New Delhi knows Nepali. So this is the main problem that Kathmandu and Delhi, they make policies and all, but it's not, it's very far, far, far from the reality. Third, and I'll end it here is that dragging of China. I think India should understand that when you drag China in Nepal, you are creating a space for China in Nepal. That is very dangerous. If you try to bring, like media has come with some news yesterday and then today Kantipur has apologized that, oh, we got carried from Indian media and it came to effect. So this is there. It's very dangerous that if you try to bring China in every factor, China will start entering into every factor in Nepal. So India should be aware and prepared for that. I think rise of China in Nepal is for two reasons. One is obvious. When you rise as a power, you create a space. America is everywhere. It's everywhere in every corner of the world. China is increasing. It's increasing its space. So it's everywhere. Second is the rise of China in India's neighborhood is also because of flawed policy of China, of India. When India makes space, it automatically creates space for China, whom they don't even know. They don't have much awareness about China, but they like it just because they hate India. So I think that need to be understood. And I think I'll end it here. And if there are any questions, I'll come to that. Thank you. 
Thank, thank you, Pramodji, for your candid observations. Uh, we have a few minutes left. Uh, I will invite Major General Binod Basne to come to present his views. Sir, you, you have three to four minutes. Uh, 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 thank yes. you. Thank you, Atul. Yes, sir. Um, it is very nice listening to all these please speakers. Un unmute your, please un unmute yourself. Please unmute yourself. Yeah, we can't see you. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear Yeah, Pramoji, yeah. please unmute him. I have unmuted with... We can hear him. Okay, we, can hear. we can hear him. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah all right. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you at all. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's very nice listening to all, all the uh, the great speakers. Uh, and I just have a, just, just a statement to say, actually. I think one thing is we undermine the reality whether it is a geography, geography is constant, but it's being accessible. We try to uh, take the geopolitical compulsions, you know, I mean, the, the reality is there. The other thing is we talk about our special relationship, yes. Now, what is that special relationship? It is guided by 1950 treaty and the Tripatriate Treaty, but what does it actually represent today? And the other thing, the final thing is the changing of mindsets. You see. So the lack of national strategic policy of both Nepal and India is the fundamental argument for the future of both the political and people-to-people -people relationship. Like, for example, the 12-point agreement that happened in Delhi. What was it visioned? What was the end state of the 12-point agreement? Was that a problem? So we endorse policies without visualizing the future of agreements, treaties, the impacts to our relationship, the sensitivities of both Nepal and India. So we do not have an exit strategy. So I think this is a moment. It's an opportunity. And we all talk about dialogue, diplomatic dialogue, telephone calls, this and that. But how exactly are we going to come out of this awkward situation is the fundamental question and we should come out. So let's take this as an opportunity. Thank you, Atul. Thank you. Uh, can we have Mr. Atul Koirala? Mr. Koirala? Would you like to speak for a while? Please mute yourself. Hello? Yeah, sir, please introduce yourself and please speak. Yeah, uh, my name is Atul Koerala, and um, uh, I know all the dignitaries here participating, and it's my opportunity to uh, learn from the diplomats and the uh, security um, experts. So I think most of them uh, know me well as well, and I know them more uh, in a familiar way. Um, so it's my, uh, uh, today I'll be just listening. Um, some other time I'll make some comments or anything. Okay. My questions, for your I'll, skin, I'll give For you. your information, Mr. Atul Koyala was the close head of uh, former Prime Minister of Nepal, Mr. Susil yes. Koyala. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Yes. Uh, next question, Mr. Lakshman. Yes, thank you. You, have been, you have been flagging your hand for a long time. You have been raising your hand. Uh, Mr. Lakshman, do you have any question? Okay, all right. So uh, in the we have few minutes left. Can, uh, I will request Mr. Yuvraj Gimre to speak for a while to present his thoughts. Atulji, I I think you know like um, now uh, we uh, I have spoken what I needed. Okay, to, you have already covered all right. There are, there are any queries? I'll be happy all to. Okay, okay. Yeah. Ambassador Bhattarai. Uh, thank you, Atulji. I think uh, yes, very sir. quick points. I yes, agree sir. with uh, my good friend, uh, Ambassador Ranjit Treji, that yes, in 2017 statement, uh, it finds no, no border, border issue finds no mention. Yes, but uh, Mr. Oli is the prime minister now, but you know, Nepal belongs to police. Uh, it has been seen 
that there has been an increasing politicization of foreign policy um, in his, um, uh, you know, the, in his tenure. And uh, uh, we have to recognize the fact that there is a unanimous unanimity in Nepal. There is a national consensus in Nepal. And we cannot deny the gravity of the situation. We cannot deny the existence of the problem, as Dr. Jai Shawal said. And we have to address it. Uh, uh, that, is, that is one thing. And uh, second, uh, well, uh, I would like to take this opportunity that uh, since uh, Ambassador Rajan is here, you know, in 1996, he said that as and when it is conclusively established by the two countries that on the basis of relevant evidence, any ter territory should be vacated by either country because it belongs to the other, that territory will be vacated. You know, later on, on September 20th, 1996, talking to Everest Herald also, he repeated the same thing. And about uh, why, why uh, India is so reluctant to uh, come to the table to hold dialogue with Prime Minister Oli. Let me go back to 2018, February. When the election results were coming in, election process was not even concluded, India dispatched external affairs minister to Nepal to cultivate Mr. Oli, that is what one, one media says. And I remember uh, uh, the, the, the uh, you know, the statement of the uh, a spokesperson of the Ministry of External Affairs. Then that was said, like, we do not need an excuse to visit each other, meet friends from all parties and strengthen India-Nepal friendship. So, and further, Prime Minister Modi at Davos meeting in January 2018 referred to the India's magnanimity to its neighbors. So, and also when the results were coming in, Prime Minister Modi, he can call, he called Mr. Oli to instill confidence among Nepali leaders. You know, they then, then sent, sent uh, his uh, uh, external affairs minister uh, and then one uh, daily that time, edit editorialized that uh, it is quite unusual for any foreign leader of that standing visiting when even the government is not formed, when election process is in. So uh, that, that editorial commented, India fears Nepal will tilt towards China and will India will lose grips. That is why the EAM came. And the focus and objective of the external affairs minister's visit was to meet and cultivate only who New Delhi is apprehensive may tilt towards China. I would agree with Dr. Jai Sabal that the more we delay, the more, you know, the more space is created for the third parties to exploit this issue. Let us not delay to meet. Let us not delay to come to the table. And I think uh, let us give diplomacy a chance to work. Diplomacy has not been given any chance. Please, in this, you know, fast, rapidly, no, no, I mean, rapidly shifting geopolitics, let us not take anyone for granted. Anything can happen um, any, anywhere. And because in this pandemic, Pandemic has exposed our capacities. Pandemic exactly, is the, the biggest well, challenge. Well safe, so, we'll, so I think I think I will yeah. stop here since uh, with your indication. Thank yeah. you, it, it's, yeah, it's 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 wishful that we, we we keep talking for a long time, but we we are running short of time now. We have wonderful discussion, and I'm on behalf of Demo diplomats lab as well as advice. I'm I'm thankful to all of you for giving your time for this informed discussion, I must say. We must engage with each other. We must think about each other and we should resolve the pending problems. And we must be hopeful for, for the times ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you.